Hello friends, welcome back to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. CSR net is knocking the door and I've got a question from most of you. How many questions to attain to qualify CSR net life sciences exam? If it's CSR net life sciences exam or it is CSR net physical science, earth science, chemical science, anything you take. So for CSR net exam, the number of questions and marks distribution, everything is same as earlier. Nothing has been changed. The only thing changed is the mode of exam. But how many questions you should attain and answer correctly in each different part so that you can qualify CSI net JRF or CSI net LS or simply as lectures. Okay. So what number of questions you can attain? So I'll give you a very brief idea about the different part and different sections that are present in CSI net exam, whether it's CSI net life science or any other stream. And among those different parts, how many number of questions you must attain and how many of them you must attain correctly. So let me divide the three uh, different part of CSI net exam that is say part C. We'll continue with first start with part C obviously then write part B and we are writing here part A. Three different sections part C, B and A or A, B, C. In part C the total number of questions the total number of question given is 25 to answer out of 75. In part B 35 to answer out of 50. In part A, 15 to answer out of 20. So the choice is more in part C and part C are 4 marks each question. Part B and part A are 2 marks each questions. Now for every wrong answer, the negative marking will be minus 1 for part C and for part B and part A, the negative marking is 0.5. Okay. So this is the total marking scheme for CSI net exam or CSI UGC net exam. Now what we need to know is how many questions you must attain to answer that. As per my experience, I always prefer and tell students to answer 22 to uh, 24 questions in part C. This should be your target 22 to 24 questions. Or let's assume that the, the minimum question here is 22 and the maximum is 24 you can attain. In part B, uh, it's again 20 to 22 questions, not much. The reason I keep less number of questions in part B, because part B is memory based question. It's not possible for you to answer every single question in 100% confidence in part B. But if you prepare well, just like the preparation that we do in Shomu's biology coaching, we make our students strong in part C so that you can answer most questions from part C, that is 22 to 24. Okay, and the last thing here is part A and you can attain 8 to 10 questions in part A. That should be your target. So 22 to 24, 20 to 22 and 8 to 10 number of questions. Because you have more options in part C, you have more chances to answer questions in part C. Now let's do a quick calculation. For every single part, we have a minimum number of questions and we have a maximum number of questions, right? So for a minimum number of question, first we'll calculate and then we'll calculate for the maximum number of question if you attain, okay? So this is little tilted, let me make it straight first, okay? So if you answer 22 questions in part C and all of them are correct, you'll get 88. In part B, let's break them down from here, okay? In part B, if you answer 22 question, which is, uh, sorry, I must write it 22 uh, in this side, which is, uh, so minimum question we are starting, okay. So minimum number of question we are talking about. So 20 questions into 2 gives us 40. All are correct, remember. And for part A, it's 16. So if you add them, how much we are getting? 80 plus 40, 120 means 128 plus 10, 138 plus 6, 144. So the total marks you are getting is 144. Now remember as per the last few CSR net uh, cutoff, 120 is uh, enough to get a GRF, to secure a GRF for general category. And we'll be giving you the description regarding the general category because that is the highest cutoff. So if you qualify for that marks, you can qualify for any other stream, okay? any other category. So 144 is enough to qualify uh, JRF. But remember one thing, this is considering a fact that all the number of question you attain were correct. But the reality is that most of the time this will not be the case. The number of question you attain will not always be correct. So what will happen if there are wrong answers? 
So let me take another color to explain the wrong answer. So let's assume that among 22 questions, four questions are uh, wrong. So four wrong questions you attain. So for four wrong questions, how much marks will be deducted? For each four question, four into four, 16 plus four marks for each ne negative answer. So it's 20. So it's generally we calculate multiplying with, with the marks five. So it will be 20 minus gives us 68 score. And in part B, let's assume the same thing. You answered six question wrong. So six into 2.5 because 2 marks for each question and 0.5 for negative mark each. So that gives us how much? 15 marks. Okay. And for part A, let's assume you answer 2 questions wrong. So again that gives you 5 marks minus. So here we, gave, here we get 25, here we get 11. So the same marks, if you attain the same number of questions but you make a mistake, how much? Four questions wrong in part C, six wrong in part B because part B has more chance of uh, taking wrong answers and two wrong in part A. You are getting 68 plus 20 to 88 plus 893, 94, 104. Now this is a borderline answering 104. Now remember 104 means 52%. Sometimes the GRF cutoff for general category is 52%, but that occurred earlier. For modern times, the cutoff is always higher than 52%, it's 54% or something. Last time it's less, but it's a chance that GRF may be more than 104. So you may not qualify for GRF, but 104 is a good score to qualify for LS. So if you are targeting LS, then this should be your target 22 for part C. 20 for part B and 8 question in part A to attain and you still have a room for 4 answers wrong in part C, 6 wrong in part B, 2 wrong in part A, still you can qualify for LS but it may not guarantee the qualification for JRF. So what you need to do to qualify for JRF? Let's look at it. So for JRF you need to attain more number of questions. So let's take this 24 question you take into 4 96 okay then you get this one 22 into 2 44 and in this case 10 into 2 gives you 20 so now the total number of questions that you answered 96 plus 44 so imagine 140 plus 20 160 if you take 24 in part C, 22 in part B and 10 in part A, you still score 160 if all the questions you attain are correct. 160 is a very good score. No matter what the cutoff is, you will always qualify JRF in a general category. Congratulations. But again, taking that wrong answering part into account. Let's say, assume the same thing. You answered four questions wrong in part C. So, 4 into 5 gives you 20. So entirely it becomes 76. Again, uh, 6 wrong in part B. So that will be same thing, 15 marks debited. So how much you are scoring? 29 from here. And then last thing again, 2 questions wrong. So 5 marks debited, 15. So add these marks now, 76 plus 30 gives you 106 but it will be 105 because it's 20. 105 plus 15 gives us 120. That gives us 120 which is kind of exact borderline marks to qualify JRF in a general category because we haven't seen the cutoff to raise like above 120 or 60 percent in recent years. So 120 or 60 percent marks is good enough to qualify for JRF in a general category. So, if you attain 24 questions in part C, make 4 of them wrong, attain a 22 question in part B, 2 of them are wrong and attain 10 question in part A, chances are 2 of them are wrong and part B, 6 of them are wrong, sorry. But you can still qualify for GRF in a general category with this amount of questions. So, now let's calculate the degree of error that you have. Here you have a degree of error of 4 questions wrong out of 24 so how much percentage that will become 
let's assume to be uh, like uh, 4 approximately 4 point something so you'll get 16 percent to 18 percent chance of error in part c and in part b 6 out of 22 into 100 so approximately 25 to 28 percent degree of error in part b and 2 out of 10 gives us 20 percent a chance of error in part a so this is the degree of error which is permitted which is allowed for you to qualify the csir net exam in life science or csir net exam in any other stream the degree of error that is permitted for you to qualify grf is least for part c that's why prepare part c very confidently answer part c question very confidently if you're not confident enough do not answer because if you answer more than 20 percent wrong questions in part c your chance of qualifying grf is going down although it may happen that you can answer more part b questions but that's a different scenario generally speaking most of the people if they don't do well in part c they don't do well in part b as well so your degree of error is 16 to 18 percent so how many number of question you answer you should answer you can easily calculate that based on the number of question you attain from part c second thing for part b and part a the degree of error is 25 percent so you need to answer one right answer i mean you can take one wrong answer out of every four question you attain if you attain four question one of them are wrong it's still okay for part b and part a but for part c if you answer three question one of them are wrong is bad if you take if you take like five question one of them are bad, uh, wrong is also bad so out of six question you can take one wrong answers in part c in part b out of four question part a out of five question that you can answer wrong so this is the idea okay so for every six question you attain one can be wrong in part c you can still qualify grf in part b out of four question one question can be wrong still you can qualify in part a out of five question one can be wrong you can still qualify okay so this is the idea that you always keep in your brain okay so if you answer 18 questions then what is the probability of wrong answers you, that can still permit three of them can be wrong more than three wrong and your probability to qualify grf in general category for that csr net life science exam decreases the same thing applies for uh, part b and a respectively based on their ratio that i just gave you so this is a detailed technical analysis of the csr net life science exam and csr net exam in any other stream uh, so this is the number of question that you should always attain now if you prepare part b very well you can recall things you can remember stuff very well then you can also increase the number of questions that you can attain in part b that can increase the chance of scoring more but most of the students that i prepare here in shomu's biology they are prefer in part c and we also focus in part c more compared to part b a is also good so the chances of error in a is decrease in less because uh, it's mathematical questions and you know which answer is correct or wrong you can guess that without knowing okay so this is the idea of every single section in csi net exam so that's all about it i believe you got your answer of how many number of question you need to attain and not only that but also how many wrong answers you can still give to qualify csi net grf so many myth like if i uh, attain wrong answers i will not qualify and all these are wrong it's it never wants you to answer every single question with 100 percent confidence you can make mistake the mistakes are allowed until you exceed the probability limit that's what i told you okay so that's all about it if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends subscribe to our channel to get more videos like that and we will uh, publish a new motivational video for csir net so watch that and share with your friends so that everybody get pumped up for the csir net exam in the upcoming times thank you everyone bye